Holy smokers, folks, the stock market just got a whole lot more interesting. Do we have some things that are about to shake up your portfolios in a major way happening now? Okay, uh, got to go through what's going on here. I'm going to tell you guys about an opportunity I see in this market, actually, a couple opportunities I see in this market right now that I think are very, very intriguing. Okay, uh, Google just reported earnings. This is massive. This is going to change, uh, let's just call the trajectory of many stock prices in the market. Uh, and we're going to speak about that. So, whole bunch of things I want to talk about in today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I appreciate y'all joining me. Thanks for being subscribed and let's get into this. Okay. So Google make Google. This is a big earnings for them because this is supposed to be seen as kind of like a trough time, you know, one Q, two Q kind of seen as trough times for Google's business model. And the best thing you could hope is that you're starting to see some sort of strength and that strength uh, becomes a lot more as we go into the back half this year. And it looks like, it looks like Everything is setting up absolutely perfectly here, okay? So Google search was up about $2 billion uh, more in revenue this year versus last year. YouTube ads is now growing again. Holy smokers, that's no dang jokers. Thanks goodness, okay? Because Google, actually YouTube ads was actually going negative which was shocking. Like that was something you could never even conceive of in the past. So the fact that we're getting back to some year over year growth here is epic, okay? A Google network was down for the quarter, so that's one of the few red spots for these Google earnings, okay? Google advertising in general was up about $2 billion roughly year over year. Google services, you add up those numbers, I mean, we're talking about three and a half to almost $4 billion up there when it comes to kind of Google services total. If we look at Google Cloud, that was that grew very nicely up, almost $2 billion, and that's off a very small number there. So that you're talking about a very big percentage base move up. Total revenues on a year-over-year basis were up about $5 billion. That's, that is exactly what you want to see for Google, okay? Now, number of employees, I, thought, I saw this at first, and I was like, that's strange. Why is new number of employees up? It doesn't make sense. Like, Google's supposed to be cutting employees. And look at this, okay? The substantial majority of the employees affected by the reduction of our workforce are no longer included in our headcount as of June 30th, 2023. We expect the remaining employees affected will no longer be reflected in our headcount at the end of 2023 subject to local law and, and whatnot, right? Requirements. So that's intriguing. So if anything, you might actually see this number uh, reflect a little lower here uh, over this next few quarters, okay? Now, this matters just as substantially, if not more for Google, okay? And for many of these stocks. You had revenue up about $5 billion roughly year over year, but net income grew very nicely. Net income grew about $2.3 billion there, right? Now, keep in mind, uh, next quarter and the following quarter should be even much more impressive in terms of that net income growth as all these like employee costs and the employee firing or whatever we want to call it, employee reductions, all those sorts of things. There's a lot of one-time costs that go along with that. Uh, you know, you got to kind of keep people on payroll while you're still trying to push them out the door. So nonetheless, the net income growth should be much more impressive over this next couple quarters. But to do $2.3 billion up year over year, that's extremely impressive, right? As far as EPS came in at $1.45, right? Now we see Google stock moving up very big. I've seen it after hours up anywhere between about 5% and 7% or so. So Google stock should have a very good day tomorrow. And this matters significantly for even a stock like Meta. Okay, Meta is moving up uh, after hours as well. Don't be surprised if Meta crosses 300 before even earnings come out tomorrow, which if you don't know, Meta is reporting earnings after the bell tomorrow, right? That's big dog. This is going to be a huge earnings period for Meta. We need to see a very similar phenomenon that we just saw on Google, where you're seeing a troughing of the business. You're seeing a revenue start to grow again very nicely year over year. You're starting to see that net income come together. And then we need to hear that they're very confident for the back half of this year and that the, the numbers we're going to see top line and bottom line are going to be much more impressive in the back half of this year, okay? If that plays out the way I think it's going to play out, it's going to mean very good things for Meta. Now, Snap crashed after hours. This used to be a stock that actually would pull down stocks like Google, McDougal, and Meta. And thank goodness the market is finally intelligent enough to realize Snapchat should not be put into the same category as Google and Meta, okay? Stocks like Snap and Twitter literally... 
you know, these companies used to be put in the same category. And you, you can't put these companies in the same category. They're a joke compared to companies like Meta and Google. I mean, you're talking about the bigs of the bigs. Now, in terms of me personally, okay, what's my plan with Meta stock if the stock goes down as significantly after these earnings? Let's say if the stock does nothing after earnings or if the stock goes up substantially after earnings, okay, which... If you ask me, do I think the stock price is likely going to go down on earnings, uh, stay about flat on earnings, or go up on earnings? I would say there's a much higher probability that Meta stock goes up significantly after earnings. And I'm, when I say significantly, I'm talking anywhere from a 10 to 20% type move. It's very possible it doesn't happen. Um, and for me, it doesn't really matter financially, like if the stock goes up a ton, down a ton, you know, stays about break even, it really makes no difference. And the reason being is if this stock goes down, if anything, I could actually be a buyer of Meta, even though uh, obviously this, the stock is substantially obviously above my cost basis. But at the end of the day, like Meta at 300 is still a deal. It's just like the thing that's been keeping me away from buying more Meta is not the valuation or the stock price or anything like that. It's just, it's already a huge position for me, right? $535,000. So, but at the end of the day, like if this stock was to go down, it's such a buy the dip. I mean, even if it goes to 330 or 360 after earnings, it's still a buy. Like you look at the valuation, you look at the future growth, it's still a steel deal for Meta. And that's a tough situation here, uh, you know, in regards to like me looking at it and being like not buying it when it's still a steel deal just from the mere fact I'm like, I need to build out other positions. And there's a lot of other opportunities in the market outside of just Meta that, you know, can 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x your money over the coming years as well, right? Now, Amazing on Amazon could also be moving uh, over this next 48 hours on the back of uh, Google's numbers and Meta's numbers. And the reason being is Amazon has now built out a very substantial advertising business, okay? Very substantial. It used to be seen as just, just e-commerce and AWS. Now it's seen as AWS, e-commerce, and advertising, okay? And so this could actually shake up Amazon stock price quite significantly. And let's be honest, if advertisers are feeling more comfortable starting to spend more money, right? Then they're feeling a little better about the consumer and a little bit better, better about the economy. If there's a belief that the consumer's in a little better place, if companies are a little more incentivized to advertise, then what that likely means is Amazon's e-commerce business is gonna to start to build more and more, right? And we could start to see AWS growth accelerate at the end of this year as well, which that stock price moves significantly based upon AWS. So we could actually see Amazon stock price move. Now, my hope is stock price doesn't move too much because I'm still in buyer mode for Amazon all the way until the end of this year. And so my hope is Amazon stock price goes down in the short term. I'm just not so confident in that, especially with the reduction in employee counts they've done recently and where I think their EPS and net income is going in the back half of this year and even into the first several quarters of 2024. Ugh, okay, so we'll, we'll see you know, how all that shakes out there. Okay, now, one of the most important stocks in the entire stock market just reported earnings, okay? In my opinion, this is more of an important stock than even a Google McDougal if you want to know how the economy is doing if you want to know how the worldwide economy is doing, but certainly the United States economy, okay? And that is Visa, okay? Visa just reported earnings about an hour ago. Here's what they did. These are gap numbers, so all generally accepted accounting principles. Revenues were up 15%. Services revenue up 15%. Data processing revenues up 14%. Uh, international transaction revenues up 14%. Other revenues up 15%. Client incentives was up 23% year over year. So the way to think about that is client incentives kind of like, um, how do I say it? Kind of like is almost like a cost to the business, right? So that's why net revenues were only up 12%. Now that's still very nice growth year over year, 12%, right? And do keep in mind, inflation numbers obviously are significantly under 12%. It's not even remotely close. So when you're gonna have your re revenues, um, let's call it explode much higher, than where inflation's at, that's a great news. I mean, if you go back to last year, right? And let's say they had 12% revenue growth last year at this time. Well, CPI last year at this time was at 9%, right? Versus right now it's in the twos and threes. So we're at a whole different point in time, right? So I think that growth is very nice. Now, total operating expenses also dropped 1%. Uh, that's great. If you're a shareholder of the stock, net income was up 22%. 22 flip and flapjacking percent. Earnings per share was up 25%, which means they must have bought back a bunch of shares, okay? These numbers are phenomenal. 
So if you're worried about the economy, right, as it looks right now, and once again, things can change six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, 10 years from now, okay? But as of right now, there's nothing you can look at with somebody like a visa's numbers and say, wow, economy's crashing. No, things are doing just fine, okay? You can't ask for more than that. And so if you're a visa shareholder, you got to be happy. If you are somebody that wants to be bullish on the economy, bullish on the markets, and wants to see people prosper and do well, you got to like these numbers as well, okay? There's no dang doubt about that. Now, you know, there is something interesting I'm seeing going on here, and the fact is, look at, look at the stock. It's not even, it's actually slightly down after hours, right? After that sort of earnings report, I mean, it doesn't get better than, like, it doesn't get better than that. Double-digit revenue growth, and then you're, you're basically growing your EPS at over 2x what you're growing your revenues? Literally, that, that's, that's creme de la creme. That's A+. Plus. It gets no better than that, okay? And so to see the stock actually slightly down basically just tells me that there's... What did I tell you guys in the, vid the video I produced a couple days ago on this channel, okay? When I was talking about Discover, and, and I think I talked about, I don't know, was it American Express and a few other companies? What did I tell you guys? I said, people are looking for a reason to sell out of these stocks. And this just seems like what's going on here. Like, why is that stock not being bought up after hours, after that ridiculous earnings report? At the end of the day, I just think there's a lot of people that are looking to sell these stocks, or scared to buy these stocks. And I think it's twofold. One is people are still concerned about a recession, right? And so who wants to hold a payment processor if you're going to go into a recession? The second component, in my personal opinion, is I think there's still worries about significant risk in regards to what if the U.S. government limits how much these companies can make on these little microtransactions. We'll see what happens with all that, but I definitely have heard a lot of grumblings over the past, I'd say, 9 to 12 months in regards to that. So I believe there's just some worries when it comes to that, and that's why you see a company like this report great earnings, but the stock's not even moving after hours. Okay. Now, I actually just heard while I was pre preparing this video that Twitter, we can call it X or whatever it's called nowadays, right? Um, I did hear that they are cutting ad prices significantly, right? Now... Let's be very clear about what's going on with Twitter. That is no representation of obviously what's going on with Google, Meta, or anybody else. Um, it, Twitter's going through a lot of problems on the advertising side. They, they've you know seen massive drops in terms of people advertising on the platform, and uh, essentially now they're in a situation where they're cutting ad prices massively. So they're just in a really tough spot on kind of the cash flow side, and I think Elon's trying to pull some rabbits out of the hats, you know, to try to get some advertising momentum there. They're just in a really, really bad spot, right? At the end of the day, you know, that's just a very tough business, kind of what they're up to, a very tough business, okay? Now, there's a significant opportunity I see in this market, okay? And I wouldn't be surprised if this stock uh, shoots higher in a pretty significant way. And that stock is Mattel, okay? So, Mattel is reporting earnings tomorrow. Now, it's interesting because this stock hasn't gone up nearly as much as I would have assumed considering their business model just fundamentally changed in a pretty epic way for the better forever. And I think there's, I think if, you know, if you had to say, you know, what is one of the stocks that's seen the most upside for the next 12 to 18 months, I mean, actually, the, I've looked into this quite deeply and Mattel's quite a story here, okay? If you didn't know, there's this Barbie movie came out, okay? which uh, obviously Mattel owns the rights to Barbie. Now, this movie's doing ridiculous numbers. I mean, absolutely ridiculous numbers. Every single day at the movies. I mean, even this is U.S. domestic box office, right? Um, Monday, they did $26 million. Like, are you kidding me? On a Monday? Like, it's ridiculous. It's, this movie is just... I mean, this is one of those movies that's going to do probably a billion plus dollars global, if not well over a billion dollars. It's extraordinary. And so this is going to end up being likely one of the biggest movies we've ever seen at the box office in terms of numbers. And so Mattel is going to be in this insane situation now where they're going to be able to obviously license a lot of different Barbie related things. And I've even seen licenses in terms of like coffee shops doing stuff and fast food places and all types of stuff. And so this is going to get very, very intriguing. But what, what Mattel just proved out here is they can had they had the ability to essentially do a movie, do it really well, and then they're going to be able to make a sick amount of money on the backside from either licensing things or selling, uh, in this situation, obviously, Barbie dolls, right? And they own a lot of different brands. And so Barbie doll sales are going to be ridiculous. Like, 
Target, Walmart, Amazon, all these guys, all the international retailers are going to be trampling over themselves to order as many Barbie dolls as possible for the next several years. Because when you launch a movie this big, it's not just a one-year help. Uh, it's going to be a multi-year help when it comes to kind of the toys that are sold around that. Uh, because this movie, you know, will be seen on the streaming platforms and everything like that for years to go in the future. And so, nonetheless, Mattel's kind of doing a little bit of what Disney's done in the past, right? It's kind of like a little bit of a stolen business model where Mattel owns a several great brands. From my understanding, they're going to come out with a Hot Wheels movie in 2025, We'll see how that does. I don't know. I doubt it's going to do as good as Barbie, but I mean, who, this is going to be one of the top movies ever in terms of uh, sales numbers. So how can you do, you know, that that well, right? But you know, Disney's always been famous for being able to come out with a huge movie, very successful, and then be able to make ridiculous amounts of licensing money off that, right? And even be able to include some of their rides at their theme parks and things like that. And so with Mattel here. It looks like they're just going to have a little bit more of an asset light strategy than a Disney without all the baggage that you get with Disney. Because if you buy Disney, we know you're getting so much baggage that comes with it. Massive debt loads. You're getting a lot of businesses that Disney doesn't even want to be part of anymore. Bob Iger wants out of many of these businesses. You're getting a mess if you buy Disney. Mattel is just seen as kind of like... The creme de la creme of what Disney has, they're, they're going to be seen as like, this is a perfect stock. And so I think there's going to be a flood of money probably this stock over this next 12 to 18 months. We'll see how it all plays out. It's just, I put the pieces together and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is probably the most underrated story in the stock market right now that I think people are going to catch on to. And, you know, there's always like a, you know, something... Every, around every November, December, you know, everybody talks about, oh, what are the top toys this year? You know what the top toy is going to be this year? Barbie. You know what the top uh, Halloween costume is going to be this year? Barbie. Ken. That's going to be the top, man. And so, nonetheless, folks, uh, you know, we'll see how it all shakes out. That's just one of those opportunities. Now, there's something else I'm seeing that's an opportunity in this market that I'm absolutely loving what I see right now, and that is housing stocks continue to roll. So, if you don't know, I'm obviously looking for hedges for 2024. And I'm going to likely execute on some of these hedges probably within the next, I'd say, three or four months, right? Because I need some hedges for 2024 just in case the market tanks, anything like that, right? And so, so a few of the places I've been looking is kind of the home builders. And so I'm secretly rooting for these stocks to keep going up, keep going up, keep going up for this next few months until I do my hedges, right? Because I want these stocks to be as maxed out as possible kind of on the upside. And obviously, if we know if the economy was to get hit in a substantial way, if interest rates were to drop, both those would would actually hurt the housing stocks pretty significantly. Because if interest rates drop a bunch, then a lot more people that have existing homes are going to consider selling their homes to move, right? Which is going to basically change the inventory kind of trajectory we've been on, which is not going to be good for housing because these these players have been able to hold up pretty well in this market because inventory has been so low. So people are like, crap, I got to go buy a new house since existing homes are so uh, few and far between right now, right? And also, obviously, if there's a major recession coming, like it, those, that's going to devastate these housing stocks. We know what happened in the great financial crisis to these companies, right? So I just look at that as a pretty attractive hedge for next year. Um, so I'm just secretly rooting for these stocks. Go up, baby. Go up. Go up. Okay. Now, Whirlpool's a stock I've been looking at as a potential buy, right? Stock's been hit heavily. And I've been considering this one. Stock's done nothing over the past five years, right? It's up 11%. Of course, you collect dividends over that time, so you're up more than 11%, but it's not very good, okay? But when it comes to Whirlpool, I looked at the numbers, and they just weren't impressive, right? Revenue's still going down for the company. Uh, gross margin, down for the company, right? Uh, selling general administrator was actually up for the company. Operating profit looks like it was up nicely year over year, but really it would have been down substantially because the previous year they had an impairment of goodwill and int- other intangibles here. And uh, also they had a gain, uh, they had basically a, uh, a, a loss in disposable business here that hurt their numbers last year as well. So nonetheless, folks, when I look at uh, Whirlpool, I can just tell you like, the business is, is it a, is it actually a worse place this year than it was last year, which is hard to believe. Uh, earnings, once again, it looks like it has a nice growth year over year, but that's because of these things here, okay? Uh, net earnings came in at $85 million, right? Uh, as far as EPS came in at $1.56, they paid out $1.75 dividends, so basically they're paying out more in dividends than what they have come through the door in EPS. 
So nonetheless, Whirlpool, I'm still keeping my eye on it. I might be intrigued at some point, but it's just not, uh, it's not it right now. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, appreciate y'all joining me. Get my investing checklist, absolutely free to access that. That's pinned comment down there. I'll go ahead and email over to you, okay? Much love as always. We got a big next 24 to 48 hours, folks, and have a great day.